Headway, or frequency-based assignment, is a method of assignment in which transit path searches are based on an assumed or observed service frequency for each line route in the transit network. As a result, the wait time at the departure stop point and the transfer wait time are regarded as a function of the headway of the line to be boarded. It is also possible to model coordination of multiple lines on shared line route sections or with connections. Let us define the parameters for a headway-based assignment. For our example, we'll assume that we have established public transport systems, a mode, and demand for our assignment. Click Calculate, then Procedures. Click Create in the Operations menu and select Assignment as the procedure, and click OK. Click Selection DSEG, then click the Select Mode drop-down. In this drop-down, select PUT, then select the required demand segments from the demand segments listed in the menu, then click OK. In the Procedure drop-down, select Headway Based. To define the parameters, click on Parameters. This will bring up the Settings menu for the Headway-Based Assignment procedure. Let's go through each of these tabs. The first tab is the Basis tab. Here, checking Calculate Assignment will result in the calculation of an assignment. Similarly, checking on Calculate Skim Matrices will result in the calculation of skim matrices. If the Regard Connector with the Shares option is checked on, then the assignment is calculated with the percentage distribution of the traffic volume to the connectors. Keep in mind that this feature is not available if the skim matrices are calculated. If you wish to restrict the demand assignment calculation to only certain zones, then a range for the destination zone numbers may be entered in order to restrict the calculation to only certain rows of the matrix. The Analyzed Relations option further restricts the calculation to the demand of particular OD relations. If an assignment time interval is defined, only those parts of the timetable and travel demand are considered for assignment which lie within the assignment time interval. This option is usually not very significant from the point of view of headway-based assignment. In the Headway Calculation menu, Headway calculation may be performed in one of the three ways listed in the Calculation Mode dialog box. Within these options, for expected headway from Random Access Model, the headway results from the expected time to the next departure from the timetable of the next line used. In Time Interval Length divided by Total Service Frequency, the headway results from the length of a time area divided by the number of trips in the time area. In constant from time profile attribute, if there are dense frequencies or if there is no timetable data available, the headway per time interval can be read from any attribute, usually a time profile. Next, click the Search tab. In this menu, if Consider Only Active Time Profiles option is checked, routes will be searched only using the Active Time Profiles. For coordination groups, one of the three options may be selected. Coordination groups essentially are used in order to calculate transfer wait time during a path search. This takes into consideration the fact that at some points in the network with higher headways, service may be better or worse than the expected average service because of the quality of coordination between transit lines. Thus, for a region-specific coordination group, select the first option, according to coordination groups. If there is no coordination in the network schedules, select option None. If groups are well coordinated all over the network, select option Everywhere. Checking on interchanges will apply user-defined settings for transfer wait time data. This is normally used when there is a transfer between time profiles of two different transportation systems to specify an additional transfer walk time. In the search criteria, note two items, the ignore path and if share less than option. Paths are changed so that those with a smaller share than the entered one would be ignored. The runtime of the procedure does not increase due to the evaluation of paths that are unlikely to have the minimum impedance. Next, 
A route dominates another route if it is located on the same OD pair, uses the same sequence of time profiles in the same order, contains the same start and end stop, yet has a shorter total journey time, usually because the selected transfer stops are less convenient. Thus, the Remove Dominated Routes option is checked. All dominated routes are deleted prior to the route choice and not loaded. Next, check the Impedance tab. The weights to be applied for different travel time attributes to evaluate the perceived journey time may be entered in the entry boxes provided. Additional penalties for boarding and transfer may be applied using any attribute separately by clicking on the boarding penalty or the mean delay or disutility factor associated with the stop. Next, in the Skim Matrices menu, select a weighting criteria for the impedance value. Then, select the appropriate option from the Analyzed Relations menu to evaluate specific relations or all OD relations. To save a skim matrix, check Save against the skim matrix from the list of available skim matrices. Then, enter a suitable name for the skim matrix in the Output File panel. By default, all calculated skim matrices will be saved in the version file. If you wish to check or uncheck all skim matrices for either saving to disk or keeping in memory, you may click the All On or All Off option. Once the required definitions are complete, click OK. To run a headway-based assignment and skim calculation, click Execute. Vizum allows the user to generate various transit indicator matrices for post-assignment analysis. These matrices are classified as skim matrices and may be used for processes such as calculation of mode choice. In the case of mode choice, one or several skim indicator matrices may be combined as part of the utility function. Similarly, these skim indicators may also be used in trip distribution. Now, let's see how to create an indicator skim matrix in vZoom. Click Calculate, then Procedures. Click Create in the Operations tab. In the menu, Expand Matrices, and select Calculate Skim Matrix, then click OK. Next, click Selection DSEG and select the required PUT demand segment, and click OK. In the Procedure drop-down, select Headway Based and click Parameters. Select the skim matrix that you wish to calculate by clicking Calculate against the required skim matrix type. If you wish to save the matrix to disk, then select the Save option and enter a name for the matrix in the file name box in the Output section. The skim matrix values are based on minimum impedance path. As a result, it is the value of the selected skim matrix based on the minimum impedance specified in the Impedance tab of the skim matrix settings. Thus, skim value for, say, in-vehicle time is the in-vehicle time corresponding to the minimum impedance path as per the impedance function defined in the Impedance tab. In order to change the impedance settings, click the Impedance tab in the Assignment menu and then enter the required weights in the perceived journey time entry boxes. Another final weighting may be applied with fair points by entering the required values in the impedance equation menu. After defining the function, click OK. Skim matrices may also be given preset values for various special elements. These values remain fixed and do not change with the calculation. In order to set these values, click Functions in the Procedure menu. Expand the PUT Functions tree and click Skims. All the skim matrices can be seen listed in this menu. In order to set the diagonal value of a matrix to a fixed number, click the default diagonal button. In the menu, the value of a diagonal may be set to either a constant value by checking the first radio button and entering a value in the box. If a zone attribute is to be set as the default diagonal value, check the From Attribute option and click the One button. This will bring up a list of attributes that can be selected to set the value of a zone diagonal from. Selecting Row or Column Minimum 
will set the diagonal value equal to the row or column minimum. If you wish to use only a mean minimum value from a specific row or column, check the mean value of N row and or column minima option and enter the row or column number. In addition to these values, a factor may be applied by entering a factor in the text entry box. This will allow operations such as taking two-thirds of the minimum value from the origin zone and placing it in the intrazonal value. The default value stored in a matrix may also be changed by double-clicking under the default column against the matrix of interest. To set a minimum value for the matrix, double-click the min value column and enter the required value. Similarly, double-click the max value column against the matrix of interest and enter the required value. These cap values may be needed if you are using a distribution function that gives a divide by zero error at a certain value. The decimal places for a matrix may be set by double-clicking against the matrix in the DEC column and entering the required number of decimal places. After defining all the parameters for the skim matrices, click Execute to start the calculation procedure. After performing transit assignments in VZoom, the results can be seen as tables as well as graphical visualization. We will take a look at some key ways of analyzing these results in VZoom. First, let us see how to view the assignment paths and volumes associated with those paths. To view PUT paths, click on Lists, click on Paths, then within the Paths menu, select PUT Paths. Paths will be displayed by demand segment. To view paths associated with a specific demand segment, click the drop-down menu against the DSEG slash path set and select the demand segment for which you wish to see the paths. You may select the attributes you want to see in the listing table by clicking the attribute selection icon and then adding or removing the required key fields in the listing table. To add fields to the listing table, click an attribute field in the lower part of the attribute selection menu and click Add. To remove an attribute field from the listing, select the field and click Delete. This will remove the attribute field from the listing table. Once you have included the fields you wish to see in the listing table, click OK. All the listed paths can be graphically seen highlighted on the network as they are selected in the listing. In order to see the pass graphically, split the screen view into Network and Table by clicking the Arrange Window icon. Now select the Synchronization Option icon with the Zoom option in the Listing menu. After this, click a path in the Listing table. The corresponding path in the Network window will be highlighted. In this way you may examine all the paths listed in the Listing table. Next, we look at Flow Bundle or Select Link Analysis for the PUT assignment. To perform a Select Link Analysis in VZoom, with the Network window selected, click Graphic, then click Flow Bundle. In the Flow Bundle window, select PUT from the drop-down menu in the top left corner. Then, click the drop-down that says Link. Here, you can see the items based on which you may carry out a Flow Bundle. Of these, usually the zone and the link are used most frequently. Select Link, then in the Network window select one or several links. You may perform a flow only for a specific demand segment. To do this, click the tab under the DSEG menu to select a DSEG and click OK. Similarly, to perform a flow bundle on a specific TSIS, Click the tab under the Supply column and select one or several TSIS from the menu. To run a flow bundle, click Execute. The paths in the flow bundle analysis can be viewed as a list by clicking the drop-down menu against Selection and selecting Flow Bundle Paths in this drop-down menu. After executing assignments in VZoom, the next natural step in analyses of results is to view the results graphically. To view link volume assignments graphically, we need to set up link bars for PUT. In order to define link bars for PUT assignments, click Graphic, then click Parameters. 
Next, click Links Tree and expand it. Select Links and make sure that Draw Bars and Draw Bar Labels are checked. Now, click and expand the Bars Tree. Under the Bars Tree, select Display. One or more link attributes may be displayed as bars. To display the link PUT volume, click on the plus sign in the display menu. To add a tab, select the tab and click Draw Bar. Next, in the Scaling Attribute menu, click the name of the attribute. In the Link Attribute window that pops up, you may select any attribute that you wish to display. In this case, we want to display PUT volume. Thus, select Volume PUT and expand this tree. Within the tree, select Analysis Period and click OK. Next, set scaling so that the link bars are displayed as graduated thickness based on the attribute value. In general, the lower the scaling attribute value compared to the maximum value, the more exaggerated the graduated thickness. Enter a value for max width to set the maximum value of bar thickness. Rounding and decimal places may be entered as required in the entry boxes as well. Next, click Label within the Display tab. This menu contains various options for display of labels on the bars. Next, select Fill Style. Here, the color of the bar may be selected by clicking the color in the color field and selecting an appropriate color for the bar. If you wish to show a classified view of the color bars, say by link type, then select Classified Drawing Mode and then click on Like Scaling Attribute. Then select Type Number from the Attribute Selection menu and click OK. Next, you may create various display classifications by clicking Create, then selecting the newly created classification and defining the color for that classification as done in Uniform Drawing Mode. Many such classification colors may be created and defined in a similar way. To adjust the font size of the bar label, click Text Format under Bars and enter a font size in the Format menu. Once the required settings have been entered, click Preview to view the newly defined link bars. If you see what you are planning to see, click OK. Otherwise, revise the bar settings until the required display shows up.